Hi, I'm Priyanka Olgadia, a staff developer advocate here at Google Cloud, and you are watching the session that's going to teach you all about the secrets of migrating um, with speed, scale, and success. And with me today, we have Jaspal Shahani, who is uh, the VP of SRE and Engineering at Loblaw Technology, and Daniel Dill, who is the Senior Vice President of Application Delivery and Cloud Operations at Global Payment Systems. I'm very excited to have a discussion with both of you today about um, how you all migrated uh, your on-premise infrastructure into Google Cloud. But before we do that, we have a few exciting announcements to share. We just recently launched Dual Run, which is a new service that's part of Google Cloud's mainframe modernization solution. It enables you to simultaneously run workloads on your existing mainframes and on Google Cloud that allows you to perform real-time testing and quickly gather data on performance and stability with no disruption to the business. So do check it out if you're running mainframe systems today and are looking to uh, migrate some of those mainframes in near term into cloud. Now, the next thing we are announcing is the Migration Center, which focuses on helping you reduce your migration project's complexity, time, and cost by providing a centralized integrated migration and modernization experience. Um, if you are migrating, these are the two tools that are definitely going to be uh, great to have in your toolkit. With that in mind, we have a great segue to our main event today that I am very, very excited about, uh, which is our customer panel on migration. So with that, uh, both Jaspal and Danielle, uh, I want to uh, one by one kick, kick it off to you to explain a little bit about um, your company. Uh, let's start with you, Jaspal, explain about um, Loblaw technology and uh, why did you decide to migrate in the first place? Lobla is the biggest retailer in Canada, 2,500 store. We are a hundred year old plus company. Uh, what we found as we were trying to scale our businesses is that we wanted to spend our energy towards building products instead of having to manage infrastructure. That's not our core competency. Uh, and that kind of underpinned the whole decision as to, you know, why go uh, there was also an aspect of developer experience, which we wanted to get it. We wanted to bring our teams together so that uh, a developer and a marketer should be able to go have the conversation using the same set of tools uh, and get a faster you know, time to market. Um, Danielle, I'd like, love to switch to you. Um, what, what does um, the, what was the motivation behind migrating in the first place? Uh, thanks, Priyanka. Global payments, we're a, a industry leader in payments, payroll, uh, and point of sale technologies. Um, we've grown a lot through acquisition. And with those with, with that acquisition comes a large number of data centers. Uh, so one of the last numbers I saw, we had somewhere around, I think, 70 data centers. Um, and that's just a large capital investment, uh, both to keep those up to date and also the staff required to run those in a in a secure, compliant manner. You know, since we're in the payments industry, we have to follow all the PCI guidelines and and you know everything needs to be super secure. And so it takes a lot to keep just equipment refreshed. Um, there's also you know, a big driver to get out of that rat race of equipment refreshes. Um, it takes a lot of high risk maintenance activities. And so you're just continuously churning, doing the same functions over and over. And so we really wanted to get our workforce, our, our engineers out of that, out of that and let them innovate and, and do more interesting things than just refresh in the life equipment inside a data center. 
Okay, great. So um, this question is not a surprise. I was definitely going to ask this one. Um, why did you pick Google Cloud? Jaspal, why don't we start with you? As I, as I mentioned, we wanted to keep our teams and bring our teams closer. So that was one. The other aspect of it was we wanted to uh, build things right from the get-go and not be, you know, just inheriting ways of doing things and replicating our org structure. I feel those were the two main drivers for us to pick up Google Cloud. Daniel? Um, we already had a number of environments running in Google Cloud. Uh, we had a merchant portal that's used for servicing our customers. We have a data lake, a main API platform. So we were we were already familiar with the with the Google Cloud technology. Um, also, when we put out the RFP for the program, we were really impressed with what Google brought to the table. They've invested a lot in their Google Cloud technology. Um, and then also Google was willing to use our service. So we were processing Google transactions on Google Google Cloud. So Google on Google, you might say. And we're just we're really excited about the innovative capability uh, between the two companies that, that we can use to help our current merchants grow. It's like a 360 degree connection from different angles. Um, amazing to hear. So now that we've covered what made you decide to migrate in the first place, the background um, of why to mig why migration in the first place, and then why picking Google Cloud, um, naturally I want to progress towards how did you actually accomplish the task of migrating? Because um, that must have been a long process in some ways. Um, was it short? I'm curious about that too. Um, but um, let's start with you, Daniel. Um, how did Google Payments uh, migrate to Google Cloud? Um, I, I think we have taken every approach out there. Um, in, in some of our first, first initiatives, we used very much a, a lift and shift approach. So the end result really looked and felt like it was just another one of our data centers. It was just running in Google Cloud. Um, the most recent initiative that we just wrapped up uh, last week, actually, uh, we took a, a little different approach uh, where we had one, one large segment. Um, it was about 30 applications where you know, we called it, we did a lift and shine. So we modernized some services along the way. Um, we still used the M4CE tool and we still cloned you know, some, of, some of the systems, but we also left behind all of that you know, on-prem technology that we're all used to. You know, we all know and we all manage it on-prem. We left that behind. So we did plenty in, plenty in Terraform's infrastructure as code. We also had a, another application stack that was just perfect for modernization. So it was completely modernized, all using PaaS services. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we took this hybrid approach uh, because that was what was really best for the initiative to exit that data center. Jasper? Uh, for, for us, I think it was more driven from what we were trying to achieve. Uh, Part of that was we wanted to keep our cost of ownership uh, still within, you know, our control. Uh, so there was a there was a whole premise of that we would only do this if it keeps us just at par with what we are right now spending. Uh, there was also an aspect or a time in between when we are migrating, wherein we tell our teams that because you're building net new systems, do not replicate your data center architectures go and pick products which are the right tools for you. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, lift and shine. Uh, we have used some of the stacks uh, currently around M4C uh, for what we're doing on stores, but it's all around, like it's all over the block, I would say. Now that you have actually executed these migrations and some of them are still happening now, what are some of the most impressive results that you've seen so far? Uh, I think two come to my mind. Uh, 2018, when we migrated our grocery business, like right out of the bat, one week after the migration, we could see like a 50, 
forty percent improvement in just performance of the stack. Uh, the other example which I would share is you know a recent one around stores. What we're doing, we migrated uh, our you know stores uh, to Google Cloud, and we have had absolutely no incident. And this is coming from a world wherein when stacks were running in the store there was constant feeding and nourishing which was needed for those stacks. Daniel? Uh, for us, it was really, you know, two things as well. One, the speed to deliver. I've been very impressed with how fast the teams have been able to do migrations and have a working environment ready to go. Um, I, I mean, I'd be hesitant to say that we could do, we could work at the same speed in an on-prem data center. I just. I don't think we could do it. Uh, the other is the operational visibility. It, it's amazing to me. It's not a week goes by that an engineer doesn't come to me and, and shows me something new, some new widget, some new monitoring technology, something that helps them do their job better. Great, that is amazing insight. Now, um, if I if you were to, there are lots of companies trying to do migration. So um, if they were to take something away from this session, um, what would be one of the best uh, or the biggest piece of advice that you would like to offer to somebody who's looking to migrate, Danielle? Um, I think it's the assessment and the planning is the of most important as much time as possible that you can put into doing an assessment and putting together the migration plan, the more it's gonna pay off in the end. Jasper? Uh, for me, it's actually the opposite. I would say, you know, uh, adhere to the principle of failing fast. So try uh, create enough room for your teams to stumble. There's gonna be surprises. You would get to understand your teams and your culture via this activity very clearly. And you know, just you know, start start early and then stay put. Two very different approaches again, but I think it does depend on the team that 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 people are working with to apply uh, whichever one that makes sense in their scenario. Great. So with that, we are at close of our time. I want to remind you that uh, the announcements that we've made around dual run, which is the mainframe modernization um, feature and the migration center, you can see the links to those if you want to learn more about them. There's a lot more detail at those links. And uh, with that, I want to thank you, Danielle and Jaspal for joining us today and sharing such great insights about um, how you all ended up migrating. It was so unique and so different from both of your perspectives. And um, I think that is what made uh, this discussion very enlightening for me as well as for our audience. Um, and with that, um, I want to thank you for listening and um, enjoy the rest of Next22.